teaching you guys all about wetlands today. So today we're looking at characteristics of a wetland and the first one that we're looking at is this grey stuff over here. It kind of looks like beard hair, maybe just hair hair that's curly and grey. This is called Spanish moss. It's very common around the southeastern United States, especially in places that have a lot of water. So, a wetland. It's a very interesting type of plant because it doesn't have any roots. It's what we call an epiphytic plant, which means it's a plant that grows on another plant, just like it is here growing on a tree, but it doesn't parasitize that plant. So this is not stealing any nutrients or anything from this tree itself. It's just hanging on, growing on the tree. This plant is, or the Spanish moss is also really interesting because, let me get us some. You can see that it um, has, if you look very closely, it has these tiny permeable scales. And these scales are what, a, that's how they, um, catch moisture and nutrients from the air. That's how they get their moisture straight from the air. Um, the other thing that they do is when it's super dry or there's a drought, they change, they go into a dormant stage. Sometimes they go browner and they hang out in that dormant stage until um, moisture reappears, until water comes back. Another very interesting thing about these is that they're made up of a bunch of different leaves that have that are up to two inches in length so pretty small but you see we usually see them in these big clumps just like just like on the tree over there and so they're all clumped together and you see them in these big forms these big masses for reproduction they have tiny little seeds where you can the birds and the wind pick up and disperse these seeds all around also, the birds can pick up a tiny little piece of Spanish moss and they carry it off and this little piece will keep growing and grow into a whole new clump um, of Spanish moss. Uh, another interesting thing about this is that people believe there's a myth or a folklore, a folk tale that says that there are chiggers in these, which are tiny little red bugs. But as you can see, as I just held it out to you, that is not the case. It's a myth except for when Spanish moss falls onto the ground, then chiggers or red bugs can go inside it, just like a bunch of other bugs can too. Um, so yeah, that's a very interesting thing about Spanish moss is that it has to live in a, in a wet place. So, a wetland. All right, now let's talk about some other things that you might find if you come to Fennessy Swamp and you're wondering about things you might find in the wetland here. Obviously, I am surrounded by water and you need your lands, in order for your land to be wet, it has to have water, right? So there are some specific things that scientists will look for about the water on land to decide if it's a wetlands, but we're gonna get into that later. Um, another thing I wanna point out is we have special plants that grow in wetlands. And one of those is right behind me, we have some cattails. And cattails are a special wetland plant because they kind of look like when they're not um, when they're not already fluffed out they kind of look like corn dogs and that's what we tell the kids that come on the swamp to look for the corn dogs and those are the cattails but they get their name cattail because they start to look fluffy and the wind is blowing so look at that what is happening you can see these are actually all seeds and they are puffing out and the wind is picking them up and carrying them off. And so what these plants are doing is it's kind of like a dandelion. When they get really white and fluffy like this, they're doing that on purpose so that the wind can help them move their seeds. Because if you're a plant, you don't want your baby plants to grow right next to you because then you'll be competing for resources, right? So this plant is reproducing by getting its seeds to go far away from the mother plant so that they will have a better chance of being successful and not having to compete. Um, so you can see that before it gets fluffy, it kind of looks like brown. And if you touch it, it's kind of soft. These are all the seeds that are getting ready to puff out. 
This is a cattail head that broke off a few months ago and we've had it in storage, which is why it looks kind of funny. Um, but if you come out to the swamp right now, it's spring and they've already fluffed out and the seeds are already dispersed. So that's why if you were to look at the ones here right now, they look a little different. But another cool thing about cattails is they're actually a really important uh, food source for things that live in a wetland, like beavers and muskrats and other things. They love to eat cattails and they don't eat the seed heads. They eat the shoots or the stalks and even the roots underground. They're kind of a tuber. And Native Americans used to eat uh, young cattail shoots and they would dig up the tubers and turn it into flour. Um, so cattails are pretty interesting and you would only find them in a wetland. So some other things that we're going to be looking at today um, that characterize a wetland or characteristics in a wetland are different adaptations that plants in a wetland might have to survive better here. An adaptation is something that a plant or an animal does or has that helps them survive better in their environment. So this tree over here is a cypress tree. As you can see, he's very tall and um, kind of, well, not so skinny, but pretty normal for a tree. But if you look down right to its base, you see how it becomes much, much wider at the base. This is what we call a buttressed trunk or buttressing. This is what happens when a tree lives in a wetland or in a very wet area with a lot of mud. So if you have a look at me for a second, you can imagine this. If I'm standing with my feet together and someone pushes me over or I'm falling, would I really be able to stabilize myself? Not as much as if I had my legs apart, right? No one in football does a squat like this. They'll just get tipped right over. You, you're gonna have your legs apart. And that is the same with a buttress trunk for a cypress tree. They use this for stability in the unstable mud and water that they're living in. Another thing that the cypress tree does as part of its adaptation to live in a wetland is it gets these cypress knees. So you can see these finger-like woody things that are sticking out of the water just at the base of the trunk. Those are what we call cypress knees. And those are actually the cypress roots projecting out of the water. Scientists aren't 100%, they don't 100% agree on what they believe that these cypress knees are for. But one of the things they believe is that it helps the tree breathe. So the tree's roots are all underground, all in the mud and the water and not getting a lot of oxygen. And so they believe these come up to help um, get air for the plant. Another thing is that it could be like a nutrient storage, so just an extra place for nutrients to be stored for the cypress tree. And the third thing is that it helps with that extra stability, because as we've talked about with the buttress trunks, it can get very unstable. And if a storm were to come, it needs that extra stability. So there's those three different things that scientists believe. And these are two, just two of the adaptations that you might find in a plant in the wetlands. Another thing you can look for when you go into a wetland is what kinds of animals live there. So there are certain kinds of animals that would, um, that only live in wetlands. And one of those animals that loves to live in wetlands is a beaver. And we have lots of beavers here at Finley Swamp and we know because they leave signs behind. And right next to me, we actually have a tree that has been chewed on by a beaver. And if you look, you can see the teeth marks of where the beaver chewed off this branch. And so when you find a sign that a beaver was there, that could help you figure out if you're near a habitat that a beaver would like to live in, such as a wetland. So there are all different types of animals that live in wetlands. And that's another thing that could be a characteristic of a wetland. Another thing you can look for is that there's actually a very special kind of soil that you'll find in wetlands. So we are going to use something called a soil auger that looks like this. And augers are really cool. They're basically kind of like a drill. At the bottom, they have sharp points. And what you do is you stick it into the ground and you twist and push down. And what that does is it digs into the earth and it's gonna fill up this part of the auger with dirt. And that is gonna give us a soil sample. 
So I am about to go walk down into here and go to a spot where we know that we can get some really good wetland soil samples because it stays wet most of the year. So I'm gonna go collect us some soil. you guys to look at it. So you'll notice it looks a little different than the classic Georgia red clay that you would find in your backyard and there's a few reasons for that. So um, the first thing I want to point out is the color. So this soil does not look red and it doesn't really look brown either and for a comparison I'll pick this up. You can see this is brown and this is not brown, right? So this we would say is more of a bluish gray and the reason for that is because there is actually not any oxygen down in between the particles of this soil and that's because this soil is covered in water pretty much year round and so all the water has pushed into the soil and pushed all the oxygen out and without getting too much into chemistry basically um, it is going to stay this bluish gray until it is exposed to oxygen. Um, another thing you can look for is the smell. And I know you guys can't smell, but I will smell it and I'll tell you. So it smells kind of like a mixture of rotten eggs and wet pennies. And the wet pennies comes from the iron that is in this soil. And the rotten eggs comes from the hydrogen sulfide gas. So what's happening is there are, there's bacteria everywhere in the world, right? And there's an important bacteria inside of soil that helps break things down um, and lives in there. And when they live in wetland soil where there's no oxygen, they are doing anaerobic respiration. And that means they're breathing, but they're not breathing oxygen. And they produce hydrogen sulfide gas as their byproduct. When we breathe in oxygen, we let out carbon dioxide. But these bacteria, they're, they don't have any oxygen to breathe in, and when they breathe out, they're producing a smelly gas that smells like rotten eggs, or if you guys have ever lit fireworks and then smelled the air afterwards, that's that sulfur smell. And this is a special type of soil that you would only find in a wetland. And those two big things to look for are the color, the smell, and then so soil scientists will get into even more detail. You can figure out how thick the soil is and how um, strong it is. You can roll it up into type of wormy shape and see how well it can stand up on, on its own. And there's all different types of things you can do to test soil and figure out what kinds of soils you have. So we've looked at a lot of different things that you could find in a wetland, but there are actually three things that scientists have come up with that they know they can go into land and see if those three things are there and that will tell them that for sure that is a wetland. And the reason they do that is because they need to make sure that we are protecting our wetlands. Because another thing we're going to talk about in a future video is that wetlands are actually really important to our ecosystems. So we need to make sure that we are not getting rid of our wetlands. And in order to know what we're protecting, we have to have a definition for it. 
So there are three things that scientists look for. The first thing is what we call a hydric regime. It's quite a big fancy word for something that means just water in general, but it's the pattern of duration and timing of water in a wetland. So in a wetland, as you can see everywhere, there is water and most of the year there is water here. That kind of makes the whole ecosystem different in a wetland compared to other places. Yeah, and then the second thing they look for, another big science word, is hydrophytic vegetation. And that means plants that live in wetlands, basically. They thrive growing where it's wet most of the time. So we looked at cattails and we looked at the bald cypress tree that had the buttressing and the cypress knees. Those we can group together and say those are part of our clue that we've got hydrophytic vegetation here. And the third thing, if you haven't guessed yet, hydric refers to water because we're looking at the third one is hydric soil. So hydric soil, as you saw with Camilla, is soil that is usually, is most of the time, it's got water at least above it or in it, which means that water has pushed out a lot of the oxygen out of the pore spaces between the soil. And so you get that sulfury smell and you get the color that Camilla showed you, the beautiful grays and blues in the soil. So those are the three things. Again, we have hydric regime. There's water here and it's most of the year, right? We have hydrophytic vegetation. There's plants that grow in wetlands here and hydric soil. We look at that dirt and we gotta see if it is the special wetland soil or not. So those are the things you can look for to see if you're in a wetland. You guys should come out to Fennessy Swamp and see if you can find those things yourself.